I'm going this That's my source for everything. They're going to get rid of this money for the debate. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, i got to give her money for the debate. It's right around. I'm going to be at I'm my... You're like... Yeah, I'm going to... The weekend before I have a I have a wedding that my niece's wedding down in North Carolina, so I'm gonna be gone for four days. So I have to yeah, really yeah, I, I, I want to give up another day. I hear you. I would if I didn't have that. I would. I'm gonna go to the debate. So probably went down. Good evening. Oh. Well, I don't know. Now that I see the two candidates. <laughs> Good evening. You guys might win. Can you hear me? You can. Okay. I am speaking right into it. Okay. I feel like you can't hear me tonight. Um, good evening and welcome to the regular town council meeting of August 20th, 2018. Deputy Mayor, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Bratton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Uh, Councillor Latina is not here. Councillor Martino? Here. Here. Councillor Rao? Here. Councilor Spinella. Here. Deputy Mary Martin. Uh, Mayor Here, I think she missed me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you were a lesser. Warren Bellow. But she said Martin. Here. Dolores, I think you might have missed me, but that's okay. It's been a couple weeks since we've all seen each other. <laughs> <laughs> I move to that Kenny Lesser is here. <laughs> I am here. Yeah. I'll go home if you want. Okay. <laughs> this is this meeting's off to a good start. All righty. This is the August meeting, the Weatherfield August meeting. Wow. Yeah. Um, the first item on the agenda is a proclamation for the Great Meadows Conservation Trust's 50th anniversary. So, if the members would like to come up and join me. Okay, so I'll read the proclamation first and then ask for some comments. The Great Meadows Conservation Trust was incorporated in 1968 by concerned citizens of Glastonbury, Rocky Hill, and Wethersfield as a nonprofit tax exempt land trust to protect and preserve the Great Meadows of the Connecticut River Valley. The trust's purpose is to save the flood plains vital agricultural, scenic, archaeological, and wetland resources, and to work with like-minded groups and landowners in achieving this goal. Whereas the mission of the Great Meadows Conservation Trust is to promote for the benefit of the general public the preservation of the Great Meadows, and whereas this includes preservation of the rural landscape, the floodplain, water resources, marshland, swamps, woodland, farmland, open space, unique, historic, and scenic sites. And whereas these lands not only produce agricultural crops, but also provide diverse habitat for birds and animal life therein. Whereas the Audubon, Connecticut has recognized the farmland and floodplain forests of the Great Meadows, a landscape level important bird area, IBA, and whereas these riverine lands provide scenic viewscapes, passive recreation opportunities for the public, and whereas the Great Meadows Conservation Trust, Inc. is overseen by a board of directors that, have, that has always included Wethersfield residents. Now, therefore, on behalf of the town council, I, Amy Morinbello, mayor of the town of Wethersfield, do hereby acknowledge the Great Meadows Conservation Trust, Inc. on its 50th anniversary. Weathersfield is grateful to the trust for its dedicated work preserving the invaluable ecological assets of the Great Meadows, Weathersfield's eastern border from the Weathersfield Cove in the north to the meadowlands of Rocky Hill in the south. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the town of Weathersfield to be fixed this 20th day of August, 2018. 
and I'd like to thank all of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And thank you for all of your continued support for our beautiful open space down in the meadows. Oh, okay. Sure, and then you can make some comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you so much, Mayor Warren. Uh, Warren. <laughs> this is uh, I'm Jim Woodworth, uh, 33 Mill Street, um, and I'm a past president of the trust. And uh, so I'd like to speak first and accept this uh, uh, proclamation on behalf of the hundreds of members over the 50 years, but in particular the giants that we consider ourselves standing on the shoulders of, which would include Eleanor Buck Wolf and Joe Hickey, the two founding members who got together in 1966 or something, said we should do something. And by 1968, they incorporated the trust in the backyard of Eleanor Buck Wolf's house, on looking out on the Great Meadow on the uh, Wethersfield Cove. And uh, we're happy to, well, and you all, many of you remember Eleanor Wolf because she was active in town affairs until 94 when she passed away. And, and Joe Hickey, who is still a board member and unfortunately not with us today, but uh, is with the, is still a, a director of the trust and uh, active not only in the trust but in town boards and commissions. Uh, there's hardly one that he hasn't been a member of. Um, and I would like to just say that uh, among the things that the trust did was to um, sort of put the nail in the coffin of the um, racetrack proposal that would have put a dike around half of the Wethersfield Meadows and uh, turned the Crow Point Cove into a marina. And I, I put a uh, newsletter on your desk, and you might just uh, look at page three that has a little bit of a history of the co of Crow Point Cove, and uh, which is just uh, nature has transformed it into a wonderful natural place. And the farmland that 60 years later is still being farmed is producing uh, Anderson corn, um, Fairweather Acres beans, not to mention uh, um, Winding Brook Turf Farm turf, as well as hay. Um, and uh, so anyway, we're so grateful and we're so proud to be part of this organization. Um, and I think our treasurer, Rick Doran, would like to say a couple of words. Thank you, Jim. Rick Doran, 223 Main Street. I'm the current treasurer of the Great Meadows Land Trust and uh, past president as well. It's my pleasure to acknowledge the Land Trust uh, in its 50th anniversary. And I note a couple of things of great import. We try to partner with uh, like-minded people, individuals, groups, municipalities in the state. And I want to thank the town of Wethersfield for being our partner from time to time and giving us insight and guidance and counsel in an effort to acquire some parcels, principally and importantly, in the agricultural zone along Elm Street. Most recently, that was a good partnership between the town and the land trust. Additionally, I, I look at each and every one of you and, and thank you, uh, you for your individual participation. I note that uh, oftentimes you've been uh, standing shoulder to shoulder with us at the Source to the Sea cleanup, as well as uh, our Earth Day celebration at the Wood Parcel. Many of you were present for that event this year. And I thank you for being our partners because it is a partnership that is important to the town as a whole as we look at uh, the environment and nature, and, and I know some of you have even brought your children to these events to introduce them to the environment and the value of preservation. Finally, in closing, I want to state that the Great Meadows Land Trust in 50 years has accomplished a, a significant feat, and that is we have either owned or we have under conservation easement here in Wethersfield over 23 parcels totaling 100, almost 120 acres of land in the Great Meadows. And the principal effort is to preserve the land for agriculture. Agriculture so the farmers can continue to grow our food at a local and sustainable area and level. 
So thank you to the town for being our partners and for acknowledging us and recognizing the 50 years of preservation of the Great Meadows Conservation Trust. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll give a quick plug. The Source to Sea Cleanup is September 29th at 8 a.m. at the Weathersfield Cove. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The next item of business is the hearing. We have one hearing on an ordinance amending Chapter 10 of the Weathersfield Harbor Management Commission. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on that ordinance? Is there anybody who'd like to speak on that ordinance? Okay. Seeing no one in the audience to speak um, on it, I will declare the hearing closed. Now we'll move into general comments. We'll start with public comments. Member of the public can come up and speak for five minutes. Um, if you would please give your name and address for the record, we'd appreciate it. Is there anybody who would like to speak on any matter? Okay, come on up. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Regan Lefebvre of 19 Willard Street. It's come to my attention that there are some ideas floating around about um, adding solar panels to many town operated buildings. And I wanted to express my incredible support for this idea. And I'd also encourage all of you to go even further and to incentivize new and existing businesses in town to convert their buildings to solar as well. Um, as a resident, I have solar panels on my own house. They are fabulous. I have had them for about three years. I now pay the company that owns the panels about half for um, my usage. So about half of the usage for my house comes from solar and the rest comes from standard Eversource. Now it varies by month, but for example, in July, I paid $2 in electricity to Eversource. So in the summer months, something like 98% of my energy for my house is coming from solar. It's a little bit different in January, not because we don't have good sun, but because we don't have as long days. People ask me all the time, well, are you saving money from it? The point is, my roof was just sitting there, having sun beamed on it all day and doing absolutely nothing. And now it's providing half of the energy for me and my family. And when it comes to the town, we have to realize that this attitude of, well, it's going to cost some money, you know, to put up the panels or maybe to give some kind of tax break to businesses that put panels up, that is penny wise, pound foolish. The real cost of not moving away from sources like natural gas, coal even, um, the real cost is going to be felt by the town in my lifetime and in my children's lifetime. It's going to be more extreme weather caused by climate change. We will absolutely feel that firsthand in town. It's going to mean a lot more road repair. It's going to mean a lot more snow removal and branch removal. So it's not a case of like, well, can we afford this now? How can we not afford to do this for those of us who are going to live in this town perhaps for 30, 40, 50 years? So I'd really urge you to take this matter seriously. We know that climate change is real. There are scientists in this room who will back me up on that. This is a small step that Weathersfield can take to make our town more sustainable. We have been here since the 1630s, not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but Weathersfield has, how can we keep going for another few hundred years? It's really got to be about embracing the technology that's available to make us a healthier, more sustainable community. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up. My name is Jerry Hayes. I live at 139 Broad Street. In March, the town council passed a resolution banning the storage of fracking waste in Weathersfield. While I'm generally in favor of the resolution, I am concerned that there was a disconnect when this decision was made. Our town uses natural gas to heat our homes and town buildings. What is our town government doing to reduce its consumption of natural gas in town facilities? It seems we want the product, but we want the harmful byproduct to go somewhere else. We also electrify our town buildings. 
According to ISO New England, over 60% of the northeastern U.S. electrical generation is through the burning of natural gas. Has our town government put up any solar PV systems on any of our buildings to reduce our use of natural gas sourced electricity? It would seem logical to do so if we see storing fracking waste as being undesirable. For three years, I served on the Weathersfield Citizens Energy Advisory Committee with Matt Forrest. During that time, our town had accumulated enough points in the Clean Energy Community Program to qualify for a free three kilowatt solar PV system. It was never approved as our town's management apparently was not even interested in a small free system or the availability of getting 50% Connecticut Green Bank funding to expand that system to a 10 kilowatt system. Since that committee has been dissolved, I have occasionally attended meetings of the West Hartford Clean Energy Commission. The difference in attitude toward energy efficiency between our two towns is striking. West Hartford still promotes the state's home energy solutions program at town events and encourages businesses to take advantage of the Small Business Energy Advantage program. They recently constructed the new Charter Oak School that met LEED Gold Standard and have purchased their streetlights, saving significant energy cost, and they are well along in converting their, all of their town streetlights to LED lighting. Also, West Hartford has installed solar PV systems on various town facilities that are rated at a total of 977 kilowatts. Neighboring towns such as Rocky Hill, Cromwell, and Glastonbury have also made significant progress in installing solar PV systems. Locally, last year, the Weathersfield United Methodist Church had a 75 kilowatt solar PV system installed. The system produces the equivalent of 95% of the electricity that our church uses. Our church members like the savings that this system provides and the knowledge that we are reducing our use of fossil fuels. I am concerned, however, that our church system is probably the largest one in a community that understands the issues with fracking and its toxic waste but does not appear to be interested in generating electricity from solar PV systems to reduce the burning of natural gas. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Lynn O'Forey. I live at 43 Boardman Terrace in the Weathersfield housing property. Um, I'm here to support um, the interest of solar panels on the town buildings. The housing authority has put in, I believe it's five um, buildings have solar panels to offset the office electricity and many residents are very interested in when there will be panels on their roofs to offset the tenants um, electricity um, and I think that in this day and age as the previous commenters have said renewable is the future we know all the drawbacks of fossil fuels um, and if there's any incentives or rebates to take advantage of i think it's a win-win solution across the board thank you very much thank you is there anybody else you'd like to speak tonight come on up hi christy salters pedno 15 fairmont street um I've been so pleased with the town council's attention to forward thinking solutions about energy efficiency and the environment. Um, I was really pleased about the fracking waste ban. I'm really excited about the potential farm purchase. I know this is not the hearing for that, but um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about um, all of the benefits of that purchase. Um, but I wanted to get up today and talk a little bit about um, supporting solar on town buildings. Um, and, you know, um, we all know about the, the dire warnings um, related to climate change. Right now, scientists are giving us a 50-50 shot of living into uh, the 22nd century. And that's scary for someone who has young ch children who will be alive at that time. Um, but I'm going to talk just about the fiscal, um, uh, the, the, the fiscal implications of um, solar. Right now, um, and, uh, the most recent analyses show that renewable energy will be cheaper than fossil fuels reliably starting in 2020. So right around the corner, um, not only is it better um, to have solar and other sources of renewable energy, 
from an environmental perspective, but it's going to be cheaper for our town. Um, my husband and I put solar panels, panels on our roof um, last October, so we are fairly new owners of a solar system. Uh, uh, yeah, not a solar system. <laughs> a, a, a solar panel system. Um, uh, the, one of the reasons we did it is we care about our environment. The other reason we did it is because it's projected that that uh, system is going to produce a return on investment that's pretty similar to if we had invested that money in the stock market. So often the town council has to make decisions um, that are a series of trade-offs because um, we can't have everything. But this isn't actually a trade-off kind of decision. This is a win-win decision. This saves us money in the long term, um, and it produces uh, a better outcome for our children. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> is there anybody else who would like to speak? <coughs> Come on up. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. <clears throat> I'd like to make a few comments about tonight's meeting. Um, going through the agenda items. Uh, trying a little bit different format here. I thought maybe I'd pose some questions and possibly they might get uh, discussed during the actual presentation. So for item 3A, B3A, <clears throat> some grant money and also B3B another grant. I'm wondering if we could get some explanation, some more specifics as to how the money is actually spent. Um, it says that uh, funds will be used to provide case management services for at-risk youths and families. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, is this supplementing uh, town employees already that already exist? Are we using the money to uh, hire somebody different or sub work out if we could get a few more specifics i think it's great to take uh grant money um you know if it's free might as well get it but <clears throat> what's it actually being used for if we if we have these different departments and these personnel already in place is the money being used to expand that if i could just get a little bit more explanation <clears throat> on uh item 3be we're going to cancel our first council workshop meeting and have a special town meeting uh, to discuss the Keisha Farms uh, bonding ordinance. <clears throat> and uh, down under the justification, it says, in addition, the town council may choose to add and vote on other business items. And I'm wondering if that's proper because you've effectively taken the public speaking portion out of the out of a meeting. Now you're going to have a special meeting, which I thought was intended to discuss the Keisha Farms property, but evidently we could put other business in there that the public won't have an opportunity to weigh in on. So I'm, I'm in disagreement with that. On B3F, <clears throat> we're talking again about the Keisha Farm property, and my question is, the text at the bottom under action required, is that the actual text of a referendum question? Or is, is that just some introductory title of what's going to be expanded on in the future? If we could just get some clarification. <clears throat> and uh, the last item I want to bring up, and I'm starting to sound like a broken record, the purchase of four police vehicles. Under justification, it says the vehicles will be removed because they're past their life cycle. Um, the aging vehicles would be increasingly not in service due to needing, needed repairs. And the time off-road for maintenance would continue to grow if we don't replace the vehicles. I, I've brought it up several times. I'm going to keep harping on it. I believe there's software available, like fleet management software, where you can track maintenance of equipment, uh, vehicles, heavy equipment. And 
you can look at what the costs are and what the downtime is for those different pieces of equipment or cars. And I don't see any reason to replace a vehicle or a truck on a schedule. X number of years, we're going to replace certain vehicles. Once they hit five years old or seven years old, I'm not sure what the case is for police vehicles. But that doesn't seem to be a valid reason to spend $200,000 on replacement vehicles. If a vehicle is properly maintained, and I know we have our own maintenance garage with qualified mechanics, and if they do routine maintenance, you're going to be able to extend the life of the vehicle. And there should be no reason to replace it because of a calendar day, nor odometer miles. I know police vehicles probably idle a lot more than they actually drive. It doesn't mean the car is going to wear out. And this tracking software or program, anybody could make one if they don't want to purchase the software, you should be able to say vehicle number 12 has repeatedly broken down. It's been towed to the maintenance garage for 10 times. Uh, we had to replace the engine. We had to replace a transmission, and it's and it's five minutes. So, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Come on up, Gus. I don't even have to adjust uh, the mic. I guess we are the same. Oh, am I taller? Am I taller than you? <laughs> Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Before we go to the normal complaining, I wanted to let you people know that uh, a street light on my street, right uh, at the pole there, it hasn't been working for the past month. Uh, the pole number is H E L 1016 or 35-H. So I don't know who you get in touch with, but that light, it hasn't been working for a while. Uh, and the more present stuff, again, here we go, the stop sign on Morrison Avenue. <coughs> About a month ago or so, I went to the engineering department, and I asked the question, what's the frontage, the frontage setback, I guess the construction line, on Hillcrest Avenue. And there is a gentleman there, you know, looked up on the map and says, oh, it's uh, zone A, it's 40 feet from the street line. He says, oh, great. And then I says, what about Morrison Avenue? Morrison Avenue, it's the same thing. Zone A, it's 40 feet. And I says, no, it's not. Yes, it is, it's right here. He says, no, it's not. You got it on paper, but I got it in my front yard. It's only about 25, 30 feet. Well, I don't know why. Well, hey, you work in the town. You don't know why. I don't know why. I've been there for many years. I still don't know why. So I asked the question. I never got an answer. That's sad. Then I says, what's the right of way on Morrison Avenue? 50 feet. Oh, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, you know, there are concrete monuments. I says, and what's the, the right of way on Hillcrest? 80 feet wide. Wow. That's kind of nice. In other words, if you take the center line of the road, which is basically in the middle of the right of way, uh, on, on uh, Hillcrest Avenue, basically you've got 40 feet F of the right of way plus 40 feet the construction line or where the, the house starts. That means from the center line of the road to the front of the house, it's 80 feet. For Morrison Avenue, on the other hand, assuming the same thing, 50 foot right of way and 25, 30 feet basically now to the construction line, it's only 50 feet. Wow, I said. We are basically, how do you say, the Hillcrest Avenue, it's about like, you know, 40, 50, 60% farther away than Morrison Avenue. What does that mean? That means that basically the cars, the traffic, it's much closer to my house, and therefore it's much, much noisier, louder. As everybody knows, uh, how do you say, noise level doesn't travel on a straight line. 
It travels in a different way, wavelengths, right? I've told you before, basically, that in 1955, Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean. By the way, in the engineering department, I says, why do you think on Morrison Avenue you have a setback of 25 feet and on Hillcrest Avenue you have 40 feet? I never got an answer. But I offer an answer probably to the people listening and the town engineer is right here. And, and I don't really have proofs, but I think it is because Morrison Avenue was never meant to connect it to Silas Dean. Morrison Avenue was never meant to be a Toro Street between Walker Hill and Silas Dean. Matter of fact, Tifton Road is still has the existing right of way that connects it to Church Street. Okay? And before 1955, there was no right of way from east of Tifton to Silas Dean. Why was that ever changed? I don't know. Now, why am I complaining for 10 years and I will not go away, even though a lot of my friends say, you have not been winning at your, no. I'm not gonna go away because every time I come right here, I'm gonna bring it up to you. This is crazy. Hillcrest Avenue is much safer street. Hillcrest Avenue has drainage, we do not have any. Hillcrest Avenue has a big, a uh, snow shelf, 15 feet, we only have three. In certain places, we don't even have a, a shelf, okay? They have three stop signs at the intersection of Orchard and Hillcrest. Morrison Avenue has two, why? But again, I'm not asking for a stop sign at Orchard and Morrison. I'm asking for a stop sign at Tifton and Morrison because the guidelines call for a stop sign. And God forbid something happens, you guys are gonna be responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Young. Good evening, <clears throat> Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, at the last town council meeting, which was July 19th, um, I had mentioned, I had watched what happened up here regarding the changing of the uh, town council rules. I watched from out here as a citizen and I couldn't really figure out what was going on, but I, I have to confess that after I went home and I looked on my computer and followed it, I could understand much more what, went ha what had happened and how it worked out. And then I went back and I looked at, I guess that same night, I had mentioned that this has happened to the citizens before in this town, where our privilege or rights, I don't know what we're gonna call it, but I think it's a right to speak twice at the meetings. Was t one, one of those were taken away back in 2014, or 2004. And at that meeting, there were uh, a number of citizens that got up and spoke uh, who, who were recommending that we maintain that five minute rule for the two sessions. Yet, yeah, in the end, in the end, the vote was to take one of those sessions away from the citizens. And, uh, you know, there was some, I, I guess the ones who voted for it were uh, Andy Adel, Mr. Forrest, he voted for it way back then. And then just last week, at the last meeting, he was the chairman of that committee to to take the rights away from the citizens to speak. He's a bad guy. Miss Fortunato, Paul Montaneri, and Deputy Mayor Karajikas all voted to take the people's rights away back then in 2004. In the minutes to omit the public comments at the end of the meeting, Andy Adel feel, said right from here, right from the minutes that uh, affording citizens two opportunities to speak at the beginning of the meeting is adequate time enough along with the various other ways to communicate with the council. 
That was his idea, that we got twice to talk. Well, if you had a special issue, we get to talk, and then we get to talk at public comment, uh, the regular comment section. But if there isn't a second one, he's wrong. But he has to make his argument, and which was a very poor one, which, you know, hey. But then we had some real fighters on the Republican team, um, Councilor Cernicki. She fought like heck to at least give us three minutes at the end of the meeting. But that wasn't good enough. There had to be no minutes at the end of the meeting. Blessed by our good friend over here, Mr. Forrest. So since 2004, March of 2004, and during the time other citizens were getting up asking to have it restated and denied, it wasn't until 2009 that we were able to get our ability to speak again at a town council meeting twice. December 7, 2009, um, they had, I guess the Republicans had taken over. And in that, they, they went ahead and brought back the five minute rule to speak at the end of the meeting. The only person who voted against that was Paul Montaneri. Of course, Mr. Forrest wasn't on the team at that time, so we don't really know what he would have voted, but uh, at the last town council meeting, he definitely wanted to take the rights away for five minutes from us citizens, which I think was pretty pathetic. But of course, there's others here sitting up here also that were on his team to do the same. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you know, at the last meeting, we, we, had, we had what's known as a hero. We had a great hero who stepped up and started the conversation about why the citizens should not lose their rights to speak. And that was Mr. Spinella. He spoke very gallantly in, in favor of keeping it. And then of course, the folks down the other end, Mr. Hurley, Mr. Rell, joined in and uh, before you know it, we got our rights back to speak without really losing. But we do have people up here who fought very hard to take our rights away. And I think the whole town should know about this. You can go and watch it. You can read some of these people's lips on the television. Okay, Mr. Young, what they were five saying, minutes are up, like, so if you'd oh, please we're losing our ordinance. Wrap it up, please. And, and, and it's really pathetic how we have people up here who would take rights away from citizens and, 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 and think that they're doing a great thing for us all. So Madam, you know, you talked about transparency that night too. Again, I say you don't know a word, you don't know anything about transparency. Okay, thank you, you for your comments. You constantly have you held back information. You can speak again at the end. Thank you very thank much. You. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Rowe. One of my favorite complaints is, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? I can. Well, I have a heck of a time hearing you folks still. Anyway, we'll address that issue later. Uh, one of the things that brings me back, and I live a pretty busy life for an old man, is uh, someone sent me a little note. Well, first of all, did I address my, did I identify who I was? No. Oh, I didn't, I, I forgot. You have no idea who you are. How terrible. <laughs> George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle, comma, spoke on behalf of the Wethersfield Taxpayers Association Incorporated in welcoming back the re-elected town officials as well as the new officials. Mr. Rue reminded the council that less than 40% of the voters of, in Wethersfield elected the present council and they should keep in mind that this was not a mandate. I was stopping. He said, what's that, what's that got to do with anything? It's got to do with Bob Young's comments. It's got to do with one of the things that unsettled me at one of the last meetings where you're going to sit five minutes, you sit down, shut up. And then there was also talk about not permitting people and citizens to speak and address issues more than once to kind of stifle, in effect, the citizens' input. 
And let me just read on, and then I'll make another couple of comments. Uh, he said that Mr. Roos stated that the Wethersfield Taxpayers Association, and incidentally, I'm still listed in the, in the calendar as a, as a taxpayer, as vice president or president or whatever, to rethink the council ruling of doing away with public comment at the end of the council meeting, okay? As they believe this to be inappropriate intrusion on the rights of citizens. I think, in a way, anything that interferes with the ability of these citizens to speak to our elected officials at the local level, and that's where we've got to speak these days. Do I worry too much about many of the things you do? No, I don't. But that is one of them. When we as citizens do not have the right to come up and speak. And I think that's anathema, okay? So anyway, I share that with you. I don't like it. And many people come, they're a bit intimidated, they're quiet, they're afraid. And you say, you're five minutes up, go sit down. I don't think it's a smart move. And in light of what is happening to our country in Washington, which worries me a heck of a lot more, I don't think that any of that kind of thinking should move into our local, into our local government under any circumstances. All right, next item. Uh, it was <laughs> just a brief item in the uh, historic farms purchase in the, in the Keisha, uh, the Keisha farm. I, I am not against the acquisition of open space, okay? And I certainly, generally at this point, I'm, I'm open-minded on it, and I think the things that have to be protected in this town are very important. Uh, where's Jim? He spoke earlier about the racetrack. Now, I don't think any of you were probably even, yeah, some of you were alive at the time of the racetrack. <laughs> we were here. <laughs> but, there were a number of us who were down here fighting at Cynthia Matthews' house and other places to keep that, thing, that anathema also out of the town. So I think it's, it's, it's not a bad idea. What worries me are the grandiose ideas that are liable to come from committees and tell you we're going to build a stadium or we're going to build more ball fields or we're going to do, I don't know what you're liable to do down there. So if, you, if this town wants to earmark that piece of property for good purposes, and buy it and hold it, and then develop some meaningful uses for that land. And that does not mean the, the, the expansion of services and activities that are going to cost the town more, both in terms of light or a new football stadium or grass or football fields or who knows what, uh, all geared in many cases towards recreation, uh, recreational activities. I think the thing that that farm does for this town is what some of these ladies spoke about here in terms of preventing, preventing climate warming and, and making the environment in this town better, okay? Now, there are many in this country, and I got tongue in cheek, I want you all notice that that, that's a lot of fake news, you know? And anybody that believes that is a little bit touched in the head, you know? So, again, the support for that, I think, is sound. I think you make doggone <clears throat> be very careful as to the usage of how that piece of, pro how that property is used. And don't, don't start right away taking everybody's idea and getting these great ideas, okay? That's that particular item. I got one other one. <laughs> uh, I missed the last council meeting because sometimes I have this little friend that comes to my house and by the time he, had, <laughs> he by the time evening comes, we're both kind of tired and I'm more tired than he is. But, uh, so I watched it on TV. I couldn't hear a damn word anybody said, not a single solid word. I could hardly hear any of the people who spoke here tonight. Are you done? <laughs> uh, I couldn't hear any of the, hardly hear any of the people who spoke here tonight. And yet when I hear and see in the town, we talk about high technology and we're going to have all of this new stuff and computers and this and that and the next thing, and we can't have a, a, a microphone that either you hang around your necks so you can't sit back and get away from it so the public can hear what you say, or maybe this thing got to be very directional and people come up here and they get back and they're a little short or a little too tall or they're afraid. You're five minutes That's all right. Silence. I'm going to ignore it, okay? No. I'm almost no. done. Okay, but <laughs> so Mr. I've had a couple of arguments with people over five minutes. We, I know. We are event. trying to adhere to the five-minute rules, so anyway, please follow, finish up. That, I would say, is also another infringement and an insult to the community to try to shut us up after five minutes. And I think my, my, my language is a little firm. My language is firm, but I think in, 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 in respect to the majority and to the entire council, 
that is probably one of the more unwise decisions, unwise decisions that this council is making. And I, I for one, am not in favor of any of that kind of stuff. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to speak tonight? Anybody else? Okay, seeing no one from the public, we'll move into council reports. Do council members have reports to make? Deputy Mayor? Uh, since the last meeting, uh, the EDIC committee has met and uh, we were brought up to date on the, all the various parcels in town. And if anybody's on Facebook, uh, you can see that the uh, fun zone building is coming down. I put up a picture uh, the second day they started on the project and this past Monday, you know, a second one to show the progress within a week. So that building's on its way to uh, not existing anymore and they'll be starting on working on a new project uh, very soon. Thank you. Any other reports? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move into council comments. Any council members have comments tonight? Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, this, this comment, uh, I'm trying here, George, to get right into the microphone. The comment goes out to the uh, several individuals who spoke related to energy. Uh, there was an energy committee in town. It did come up with a, a final report uh, probably five or six years ago. I'm not sure if that report was ever actually passed by the council, but it certainly still exists. And if there is um, some type of, uh, or if there's some consolidation of effort that people want to get together and start to think about solar and and the new solar that's sort of coming out, um, out of, mostly out of Buffalo now, uh, then I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards and see if there's some type of a consensus and see if we get the citizenry involved in, in that good work. So there has been a lot of work in the past, but um, I'd be happy to talk to them in the future. Thank you. Any other council comments? Council just Hart? a question to say, where, just where are we with the hiring of the custodial supervisor? I know one was hired and left abruptly and just kind of want to understand where the hiring is for that. Do you have the answer for that yet? Thank you. I have to get closer to the mic. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, the applications have closed for that and we have an interview panel set up on Thursday. Any other council comments? Okay, moving on to town manager's report. I just have a couple things. I'd like to mention that um, we're moving forward with our street light projects. We, as you know, the town has bought the street lights and we asked residents to give us input on three different streets in town. We put different light fixtures all at the same 3,000K um, ambient light, if you will, but the fixtures are just, were just a little bit different, and we asked people to call in and give us their opinion. We also got opinion from staff. We took um, information from uh, references, and the light fixtures that are on Knott Street are the light fixtures that will be going up in town. So I just wanna make that announcement that based on they're the most commonly ones used, they're cost efficient, easy to maintain, and came out ahead in what everybody was looking at in terms of the lighting. So those are the lights. So if you drive down Knott Street, kind of in the middle of the street, right near Charles Wright School, if you look up, you'll see the light fixture. Or if you don't notice it, that's even better. That means it's doing its job. So. Um, over the next several months, you'll see people in town starting to change over the light fixtures. So that's coming up. Thank you. Um, will that work be done by the end of the year? Is that the hope? Our, our plan is to have it done in the fall. Okay, thank you. And one other item to uh, mention also is that the town uh, just received uh, uh, good news in terms of our, um, we applied for grants to do some street repair here in town, two different grants through the local transportation capital improvement program through CROG and the state DOT. And we've been funded to do the reconstruction of Wolcott Hill Road and Franklin Avenue 
from Jordan Lane to Victoria Road in Hartford, and also the Highland Street pavement rehab from Rocky Hill Town Line to Thornbush. So two of those projects through our engineering department putting in for grant applications through CROG. We just found out at a meeting last Thursday that we're gonna be funded for that and be moving forward in the, over the next year as we develop plans and move forward with those two street rehab projects. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Okay, town clerk's communication, do you have anything? No. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, I don't believe we have any resignations or appointments to boards and commissions tonight. So we will move to the approval of the ordinance amending chapter 10 of the Weathersfield Harbor Management Commission. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest? Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move, uh, move to amend the ordinance regarding chapter 10 of the Weathersfield Harbor Management Commission, effective the 1st of September 2018, as outlined in the agenda packet. Thank you. Will you be speaking to that? A second. A second. Oh, that would help. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, Kathy, would you speak to that? Sure. The Harbor Management Commission, the only change in this is it's going from six members to seven members. The reason for that is the Harbor Management Commission is part of the Advisory Parks and Recreation Board. And through Council's action at the last meeting, Council had the Parks and Recreation Board go from six members to seven members. So this is just cleaning up some language in the Harbor Management Commission. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments on this? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, motion carries, thank you. Um, we're leaving the vehicle lift on the table. So next is other business. Juvenile Review Board grant for social and youth services. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept an Office of Policy and Management grant of $7,980 for assistance to our Juvenile Review Board. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Kathy, okay. will you be speaking to us? I can speak to this a little bit, but with us this evening is the Assistant Director of Social and Youth Services, Erica Texera, who's been um, very much involved with this grant and can certainly answer any questions. Thank you, Erica. Good evening. Thank you, Kathy. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Town Council members. Um, we are here tonight because we have the opportunity um, to apply for funds to support our Juvenile Review Board for the fifth year now in a row. The only change this year is the amount has decreased a little bit, um, and the funding will be issued through OPM instead of DCF. We have um, a very active. Can we? Sorry, that's okay. A little technical trouble. Yeah. You're, you're fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I technology can't handle it. Oh my God. George, I just texted my husband at home and asked if he could hear us, and he said he can hear us at home. Yeah, he's not as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We have a lot of old <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. Please That's continue. Okay. Um, um, the amount has decreased a little bit this year, and the funding will be issued through OPM instead of DCF. So those are the two changes that we have for this year. Um, we have a very active, diverse, and invested board, um, and this grant allows us to provide intensive case management services uh, to the youth that are brought to our attention, as well as their families. And in terms of the case management support, we do hire a, uh, case management, um, very minimal hours um, staff um, that is less than 10 hours a week to provide intensive case management, which includes coming to the Juvenile Review Board meetings, as well as assessments, intensive um, uh, assessments that we have, an intake process. We'll conduct referrals for any type of counseling treatment um, and a, a, a bunch of other different things that families might have needs for. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. The next item is the community mini grant for social and youth services. Do I have a motion? 
Yes, motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a grant of $5,000 for prevention and response efforts for the opioid crisis in collaboration with the town of Berlin. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are you going to speak to that too? Yes, America? I am. Great. Do you have anything you wanted to add, Kathy? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so this is a new grant that we will be collaborating with the town of Berlin to target the current opioid crisis. Together, um, Rocky Hill and Newington will also be applying for the same $5,000 grant. So if approved, this will allow for $10,000 to be used within the Central Connecticut Health District for us to, um, for the four towns to collaborate um, for project planning, implementation, and carrying out deliverables um, targeting the opioid crisis. Deliverables for this grant include substance abuse and overdose um, prevention, community education, um, local public awareness regarding the opioid crisis, um, as, long as, uh, as well as a bunch of other deliverables that we will be um, targeting. Thank Does you. Do you have any, any questions? questions on this? Yeah. Councilor Rell. Thank you, Erica. Uh, and thanks for saying that it's a new grant, because yes. I don't think I'd ever seen this before. And unfortunately, opioids are hitting our attention more today than last year which was more than the year before and year before year before Absolutely. in the last five years so this is something finally we're starting to realize that needs to be tackled you know seeing the cases come out of the new haven green of 80 some odd mm -hmm. um, overdoses maybe it was heroin maybe it wasn't k2 whatever that is um are we seeing a prevalence of overdoses are you seeing it with any of the youth and social services uh, cases that are coming into the town? Um, we're not seeing overdoses so much with youth under 18, but there have been um, a couple with um, recent graduates, so young adults. We're seeing them start the use as young adults, and then the addiction is starting to really um, take over people's lives in their 30s. Um, the mm -hmm. medium age, I believe, is um, somewhere in the 40s right now of um, the, where the crisis is hitting the hardest. Right. Mm -hmm. And specifically of the $5,000, what are we doing? What's the town going to be doing or collaborating with Berlin and the two other towns with? So we, um, we're we collaborating with this one, just with Berlin, and then Rocky Hill and Newington are going in together so we can pull $10,000 together. And what um, we are going to do with this money is really it's education into the is community. It, I'm sorry, pulling yeah. 10000 or 20000 10000 together, so Ten. five and five. Okay. Yes, between the four towns. And since, since we are working with the Central Connecticut Health District already on these subcommittees for the opioid crisis, we thought it'd be a great opportunity for all of us to work together. Um, so we will be doing um, different types of prevention um, workshops. We will be trying to meet with um, prescribers in the community to make them aware of um, systems that they could be using to track um, prescription of um opioids. Mm -hmm. We also will be working with the school systems to bring in presenters. Um, we will be holding a training on Narcan training, which is the reversal for uh, an opioid overdose. Um, and it, we haven't thought of all of our um, all of our deliverables yet, but we will be doing a lot of prevention. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. One step forward. Yes. Thank you. Amy. Thank you. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Eric, I, I share Councilor Rell's, uh, and I'm sure we all do, of how important this is and how the problem keeps growing. Do we keep statistics in Weathersfield in terms of that? And is that something, I know not tonight, but you could share with the council and the public? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we do have statistics. And the health department has really um, taken the initiative to get this the ball rolling and spreading it into the community and they have different um, forums that they've been holding over the past year or so um, I know many of the counselors have attended some of those meetings they have ongoing um, uh, work groups each month that meet um, for different aspects of the opioid crisis I know just in terms of um, the state of Connecticut we had a 13 percent increase in um, deaths for overdose in 2017 from 2016 and that the number of deaths in 2017 was 1040 and in 2016 it was 917 and it's just the curve is still going up and we don't see it trending down as of yet thank you and if we can get weathersfield numbers that Absolutely. would be great thank you mm -hmm. thank you are there other questions comments okay seeing none all in favor aye, aye. Opposed? Any abstentions?
Motion passes. Thank you Thank for coming you. tonight. Okay, the next item is the grand list tax tax write-offs. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest? Move to write off the uncollectible taxes on these unidentified real estate, personal property, motor vehicle, and supplemental motor vehicle accounts for the 2002 grand list year per section 12-164 of the Connecticut General Statutes. Thank you. Kathy, are you going to have Marlene come up? Okay. Again. That's Do I have a second? Second. No, honestly. That's my Still job to second things. Well, you're summer break. You're Thank you. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Marlene. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> this is it would be the 16th collectible list of 2002. Once the 2017 became due July 1st, so by law we have to write off the accounts. We don't. We are no longer able to pursue them. Okay. Are there any questions, Councilor Forrest? Is it? Um, I was reading through. Uh, just oh, here we go again. Uh, on the on the accounts for that we have to write off, or excuse me, do we are we required to write them off, or is it an option to write them off? No, we're we're required to. The law says shall. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Now, prior to write off, uh, prior to write off, can we sell them? Like, there's all obviously there's tax sales of all kinds of things. Could we sell these? I would have at to a, look at into pennies that. on the dollar. Yeah, that I'm not sure. I would have to look into it. I don't know if another party would have the authority to go after them. Right. Which is, I mean, there's tax sales for all kinds of stuff, and, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if this is sellable. Um, and the um, what have been the what is the process that we go through for collection that it's been 15 years and these people aren't haven't paid them or. Enti or entities, it's not just to be a person. Oh, well, the real estate ones are those vacant lots that we can't seem to do anything with. That's what those are. And the cars, a lot of them are, they left the state. And at the time the list became due, the town didn't have the utilities to go after the people. We have now, we have Accurant that we look people up on and we find, uh, the, as you'll see, as the lists go down, the current list now have less and less people that this is happening to because we have more ways of finding them. And the same with the businesses. We get them right away as they're not paying. We use the marshal. Marshal serves warrants. Sure, right. Now, in the past, uh, when did Accurant come into play? It's been a couple of years now that we've had it. So have we, uh, even though these are, so a couple of years ago, these debts would have been 13 years old. And, and how did the system work for those, for the, this current 35, a little over 35,000 group? We tried finding some of the people that were on, when we first got it, that were on the older list. And a lot of them was hard. Some of the people changed their names. Um, they went to other states and they just choose not to pay it because sure. we don't report to credit bureaus. It's really no hit to them if they don't pay. If the other state doesn't cooperate with Connecticut, which I believe as far as I know only Florida checks with us if someone tries to register. So if they register in another state, they're home free unless they end up coming back to Connecticut. Are there, aside from Accurant, are there any other processes uh, which you think in the future that we might, I'm being a little prospective now, um, that we might think about um, implementing in order to reduce this list further going forward? Um, we do. We use the internet because Concord is helpful in finding businesses sure. or the owners of the businesses. Um, other than that, it's, you know, like with the real estate, it's really the lots. We just really have to get, do something about those lots. Are there, will there continue, continue, to be, continue to be a tax lien on them, though? Mm -hmm. Even though this would be a discharge from our well, there won't books, on the so ones we're writing off, but they're only on they're they're on every year. So even though we're writing off this year, the lots that are being written off this year, right. they're on the next fifteen going forward. Uh, can you explain that a little? So further? they're on the two thousand seventeen going back to two thousand three. So for the real property, those would just sort of continue. Yes. But for the personal property, motor vehicle, and those go down. Four. Those have, those have gone down quite a bit. The personal property, it's a little hard if they go out of business and they filed bankruptcy, then we have no, again, we have no recourse. And if there, someone does file bankruptcy, though, are we involved in that bankruptcy discharge? If they list us, yes, we get something um, from their lawyer. A right. lot of times when they don't list us and we send them a notice, then they in turn reach out to their lawyer. But they have to list us in the bankruptcy, which most of them do because they don't want us hounding them. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. 
The next item is the, <clears throat> excuse me, motion to approve the fiscal year 2018 budget transfers. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the fiscal year 2018 budget transfers. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, we have Mike O'Neill here tonight to answer questions. Kathy, would you like to begin? Sure. This is um, with Mike's uh, great assistance. We've worked on uh, closing out the end of the year, the fiscal year 18, and we're presenting to council tonight the ways to close out that year with both making sure that we're thinking forward so that we're putting money forward for any unanticipated items and also looking at uh, current items and what we need to fund as we're moving through this year. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. You're welcome. Good evening, Mike O'Neill, uh, Finance Director. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll try to give you a relatively high level overview of things and then certainly take any questions that you have and go into more detail. I'll speak from this sheet, which is a spreadsheet with terribly small print on it that I'm responsible for, but try to get everything on one page. Um, a big picture, the overall results for the year, revenues were short of budget. Um, and all, all everything that we're speaking about, I should say first, is uh, subject to the audit, which uh, Bloom Shapiro, our auditors, uh, will be on site at the end of next month for a couple of weeks, and then we would issue a report sometime after that. Um, so it's the, all these numbers, numbers are subject to that, but we are, uh, we're done paying bills, we're done on the expenditure side. Um, accounting standards do allow us to continue to record revenues attributable to prior years until the end of, until 60 days after year end, so the end of this month. So we do have a little bit more, um, don't expect anything dramatic on the revenue side, but anyways, that, that's Mike, where we can are. Can you speak into the microphone? I'm getting indications that they can't hear you okay, on TV. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very sorry. So revenues, uh, as the numbers stand right now, revenues are short of budget by 672,000. Um, that's due to the governor's holdbacks. We had planned for an $809,000 shortfall. And if you recall, in early February, you approved a deficit mitigation plan to uh, plan for that. Uh, so revenues are short. Expenditures, um, we have uh, $2.1 million in unexpended funds. Um, so before we consider what, we, what you might do um, in terms of transfers, we have to take away from that the funds that we set aside for the deficit mitigation plan. So that's, that's what um, on the sheet you can see at the bottom of column one, $2.1 million unexpended. And then we deduct from that column two, $809,000, which was the deficit mitigation plan. Uh, column three is reconciliation transfers. There were three departments uh, that were over budget. Um, and so it's necessary to uh, make transfers in order to, uh, to cure those deficits. Two of those, town manager and town attorney are, are due to uh, legal expenses which exceeded budget and the third is the tax collector that's over by four thousand dollars and that is attributable to uh, payroll it's a very small department and one of the two full-time employees is a member of a bargaining unit where we if, if you recall in the budget we do not budget for pay increases for bargaining groups that are in negotiation we put that elsewhere in the budget so um, in the 18 budget, there was one, em one of the two employees who was budgeted flat uh, for payroll. And when that group settled, there was a retroactive pay. And so they were over on the salary line, um, which was expected and only noticeable in smaller departments because generally speaking this year, we had unexpended funds kind of across the board. And so those, those deficits wouldn't be noticeable in the larger departments. Okay. 
So column three is the reconciliation, reconciliation transfers as we call them. And then in columns four, five, and six um, are a series of different uh, proposed transfers to one of three places. The res uh, various reserve accounts in the capital non-recurring expenditure fund. That's the fund where we pay for uh, rolling stock vehicles, equipment, things like that. Um, we also pay for uh, revaluation and some other things, IT, larger IT equipment, and that sort of thing, and the radio system. Um, so that's one source. The other source is the capital uh, projects fund reserve. That's for large capital projects. And then the last uh, destination that we're proposing is the compensated absences fund. And that's the funds that are set aside to uh, pay out accrued leave uh, sick time for employees that are entitled to that. There's still um, some, some employees who have been around long enough that they have, they're still entitled to that. And so we, we maintain a fund where we, uh, we use that when there's larger balances to pay out. So if you take the, the and I'll, I'll work in round numbers, unexpended funds of 2.1 million, subtract the 809,000, which is the deficit mitigation plan, that leaves you with $1.3 million, and the proposed transfers, if I just summarize those um, to those three sources that I mentioned, um, the proposal would be to transfer $82,000 to the Compensated Absences Fund, $506,000 to the Capital Projects Reserves, and $698,000 to the Capital Non-Recurring Expenditure Fund. I'll stop there. Thank you. <clears throat> Do counselors have questions or comments? Councilor Hurley? We spent $100,000 over on legal fees for, those were all for contract negotiations, a lot with the local 818. The uh, overage in the town manager line is where the legal fees for labor negotiations is budgeted. Um, town attorney would be for non-labor matters. Do we know why the town attorney went over by 50, almost 52,000? I summarized that information this afternoon. I don't, I mean, I'm not familiar enough with it. I would, I summarized it by, uh, you know, by matter. I don't okay. know that. Could you send I mean, that to us so we could take a look at yeah, it? Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't, uh, I just don't wanna say anything that, you know, as far as is pending litigation. Um, that I shouldn't say on that. But we do, to answer your question, we've, we've summarized that. We've summarized it for three years so that you can kind of see, um, you bo tried to boil it down to a dozen or so, a dozen or so matters. Okay. Thank you. Then I questions? have a couple comments too. Go ahead, yeah. Um, I don't think we should be paying $10,000 to update the town manager's conference room. And I don't think we should be putting another hundred thousand dollars into the salt shed, or putting a hundred thousand into undesignated reserves. I think that's two hundred and ten thousand that can go into roads, um, which we normally do. We normally try to get a road done for some of this money. Comments? Are you finished? I'm finished right Okay. Councilor Rell? Yeah, actually, in, in looking at this, and Mike brings up a good point, town council transfer conference room, it just says conference room. We assume that it's upgrades to the conference room. I, I really don't know. Can somebody, either town manager or Mike, acting town manager, sorry, Kathy, or Mike, talk about that? Do we know what's going on with that? Yes, we were just looking to replace the tables, the table and chairs in that room. Just the chairs are just in very terrible shape. And that was all. We were just looking to do that. Have we looked at, has there been a cost analysis or anything like that? Uh, um, 
anybody going to look at uh, what vendors are, are selling which products? Or are we just going off the shelf or something? No, uh, we've been talking with staff over the past several months have looked into different areas where we've looked at some quotes and things. So we've been looking at that to see if money would ever be left or we could find money to replace. Really, it's the cheers that are the key. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just right now, with the unknown still going, and I sound like a broken record, but with the unknowns going forward, $10,000 doesn't seem like a lot. But, you know, I think right now at this current situation where we're at, and, and not knowing if we're going to have to do with a, a deficit mitigation plan next year or not, um, what the the possibility of ECS funding, state funding, any kind of grants coming into the state um, starting in January when the legislature starts tackling their new deficit. I don't think $10,000, while it may seem small, is a, um, an appropriate item for right now. Just my thoughts. And I don't know if there is any way we can, I mean, the, the proposal is as a whole, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, we can't do it by line item, can we? I would Pick, think, we'd, yes, yeah, we, I would think we we'd can. be able to make a motion to, am, to yeah. amend, we could yeah. amend the motion to, to read something else if that's um, the council's intent. Well, we have a couple, but, well, Mike mentioned a couple. Um, that was one that caught our attention, or at least my attention as well. Um, I do agree that the um, undesignated reserve, the 205,000, was that the one you were? No. Or which one were you talking about? Below that, 100,000. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, where is that on? Uh oh. And the salt shed. Okay, that's where you came up with the $200,000. Yeah, I think those two, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we and Sally's not here. I don't want to put Derek on the spot on salt shed. I don't think it's under your purview. But how much money have we given towards the salt shed reserves already, Mike? Kathy, <coughs> excuse me, Kathy or Mike, is that a number you have handy? I have that. I just have to find it in my... Yeah, same answer. Okay. Um, while they're looking, are there other questions or comments about this? Go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to amend the motion to... Okay. Well, I, I just had a couple more questions. Okay. You <laughs> had more questions. Go ahead. While you guys are still looking. Town Hall Chiller study, $30,000. That's, again, something I had never heard of. Um, I know... I mean, just looking at some of these uh, security film for schools, have we gone through, has the Board of Ed gone through a, and maybe Councilor Forrest would know, haven't been on the, the Board of Ed, has the Board of Ed gone through any kind of plan or uh, security assessment on, on the need for the security film? I can, sp I can speak to a couple of them. The security film um, was in the budget, and we had to... Uh, reallocate funds from that in order to remove the underground oil tank. Okay. So when we removed that money for that purpose of the security film, it was our intention if funds became available, we would put that money back. We would re earmark that money or earmark that money anew for the security. And it, I, the, if I'm not mistaken, it also goes for the flooring the and carpet, Hammer and Charles tile, Wright. Exactly. The roof repair. So that was all, but I don't remember the chiller. The chiller is because there's a water problem there, and there may not be a chiller if we don't figure out how to fix it. Okay. And Kathy can speak more eloquently to that. Okay. Go, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the chiller is located on the second floor of the library. And this past summer, again, we had an issue where if it rains a certain way, it rains into that building, water accumulates in there, accumulates under the chiller, around the chiller. This time it leaked through the wall, down into the first floor, into the fire alarm, set the fire alarm off. So when we went up there to 
clean it up, pump out the water, clean up the mess, when they pulled the water um, tray from underneath the chiller, there were parts, unfortunately, of the bottom of the chiller that had rusted right out. So we don't know how long that's going to last. Okay. And so what we want to do with these funds is to bring in a um, consultant to do a design to give us a cost estimate of what it's going to take to replace it. And part of that means that in, in, in today's world, these types of units should be outside on the ground. And so that takes a little more sophisticated engineering than we're capable of doing. And my concern is if we don't start doing something now and at least getting a cost estimate for replacing that chiller, mm -hmm. I don't know. We can't guarantee that unit is already well past its life expectancy. Gotcha. And when we saw the metal just rusted out, that, that concerns me. Had there been anybody doing routine maintenance on that chiller, looking at it. Tremco is up on our roofs every four or five years, looking at um, any holes or where any kind of mechanical is attached to the roofs through any kind of you know, um, water barrier. Had anybody noticed any problems with that in the past at all? I Had believe- we been doing routine maintenance on it? I believe we've done routine maintenance on it all the time and it's just very weird the way it's designed and, and the water comes into the building, it's just a, a terrible design in today's world. They've done, if you could see that unit, they've done everything possible to keep the water out. And it's just such an old unit that you're, you're patching mm -hmm. wherever you can. It's right. almost like we need to, uh, never mind, I was going to say that commercial that shows you duct taping the bottom yeah. of a boat or yep. something. <laughs> um, Just haven't done, probably done pieces of that. Dare I ask that if a study to move it from the roof to a ground unit costs thirty thousand dollars, what would a replaced chiller unit or chiller cost? And if um, I'm not mistaken, for those who might not know, a chiller I would imagine is something where the air conditioning goes through condenses, cool air goes, warm air goes in, cold air comes out somehow? Yes, and it's for the whole building, not just the library. Okay. So it's also the town hall. So it's both facilities, and it just happens to be housed over there. Um, I'm not, I, I'd be giving you a ballpark figure of sort of what we talked about, but I, it wouldn't be a number that I would ask you to hold me okay. to. I would say two hundred to $300,000 maybe. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what it would take for it to go outside on the ground and outside on the ground with maybe the duct work coming into the building. That's really just a Sally, I think, is going to be here later, but she could certainly give us a. And this is, wasn't during your time frame, but when the town hall was remodeled just a short number of years ago, had that been even considered at all? Do we know? I don't know that. Okay. Something probably to, to look into whether or not it was brought before the um, renovation committee and tabled or never even brought before them. so We could certainly look into that. Okay. Um, back to the salt shed. We, <laughs> how much we got into that so far? All right, I could try and I could speak to the salt shed for you, just clarify what, what's occurred this past year. <clears throat> you may remember, um, in recent years, staff has been talking with other municipalities that put up similar sheds, as well as some manufacturers, and we were given a few years back a ballpark number, about $500,000 should cover the cost of the shed. So over the years, CIP, uh, CIAC had allocated CIP funds to the project over a number of years. I think we got up in the ballpark about 480 something um, this past uh, <clears throat> fiscal year. So we put together plans this past spring, early summer, based on DEP's recommendation. Uh, you may remember when I was here in the spring, they had originally indicated that they, next year they were looking at issuing a new permit that may preclude us from installing the shed at the site, which is where we need to have it because of being in the floodplain. So we worked uh, kind of double time to try and get a project out. We had two separate bids. We had bid a salt shed structure, just the canopy, steel cover, fabric canopy structure, 
um, in early June, and we had three prices on that. And you may recall we bid it out in three different sizes because we were thinking the price may come in higher than we thought, and the prices ranged from 216 from the smallest shed up to 246. And when we came for approval, we said, you know, depending on how the bid for the site work came back, we may opt to go with a smaller shed size than the one we initially want, originally wanted. Originally, we were looking at 80 by 90 shed. Um, we did scale it back, knowing that the prices came in pretty high to a 70 by 80 foot shed, which was we felt was still large enough to accommodate the goals of the project. And then we went on to do more detailed design for the site work. So we had uh, geotechnical engineering we had study done. We did soil borings. What we found was the soils down there in a particular location we were looking to put the shed wasn't as ideal as we were hoping. So what that meant is there was unsuitable material below the footings that would need to be removed and replaced prior to putting in the foundation to be able to support the structural loads. So that was on an, an anticipated um, uh, finding when we did that. So we went through, we went through on the smaller size foundation. Uh, we've you know, cut the cost as much as we could and we bid that and those bids came in in July higher than we anticipated to, which put us over the money we had available. So the decision at the time was um, DEP had said uh, over the summer they have kind of changed their timing and if they issue the new permit, they said it would be October 1st of next year at the earliest. Um, and they also said that, you know, they can't really even guarantee it would preclude us from putting there. So the pressure to get it done this year kind of was relieved by DEP saying that really if we were in construction by October 1st next year, we should not have a problem. So the thought is based on the fact that we put this out to bid kind of in the June time frame for construction of projects like this is kind of late in the season. A lot of contractors are already booked for the year. You don't always get the best pricing. We thought it was best to kind of pull back and look at another option. Um, we had talked with staff. There is another option at the site where we feel we're hoping we might get better soil conditions and better site grades that might allow us to reduce the volume of concrete we'll need for the foundation and also minimize the volume of uh, unsuitable material that would need to be taken out, which hopefully will reduce the cost of the project. Again, we're looking at doing a redesign, so we're thinking of if we can move the structure, cut down on the size, and hopefully find a location on site that's nearby but still will may work for us, we can get the price down in addition to bidding over the winter when we'll have more competition <coughs> and uh, we're expecting to get better pricing. We thought it made sense, let's just pull back and see what we can do. The request for additional funds is just based on looking at what we had gotten for a low bid price. The steel canopy structure that we had the low bid on, we've been told because of some of the tar new tariffs that have come in, um, they do manufacture this particular product in Canada. They, they may or may not be able to hold the pricing on that. So we've, we've got a couple of things out there, but thinking that if they are willing to hold the pricing or even if there's a little bit of an increase in the pricing on the, on the canopy and what we got for low bids, that we're going to be over the 500000 that we were allocated to this point. So the request was to kind of get us a little closer to where we think we're going to be once we put this project out to bid. Um, we have looked at options and it was bid that way too that if we can't have a contractor come in and do all the work uh, we may need to have fiscal services staff do some of the excavating of material, replacing materials. It would take them away from other responsibilities they have but that might be a way to try and save costs. So this request is really to try to get us more in the range of where we think we're going to be based on the soil testing and the engineering that we've done to date as to what we found when we were doing this down there. Okay. So in a nutshell, so we're looking at four hundred and eighty some odd thousand dollars right now. An additional hundred thousand dollars for any kind of unforeseen not unforeseen but soil borings showing that more reinforced concrete would be needed. What's the hun additional hundred thousand dollars for that, or are we the building it bigger? No, it's really it's going to cover us to go back and do some more field investigation to see if this other site would be more suitable for us, where we think we can cut the cost down to some extent. Um, although even with that, we expect the money that's been allocated today, because that money that's been allocated today goes to geotechnical engineering and structural engineering too. So we do have some consultants doing work on this. So that is not a separate, that wasn't a separate funding source as far as design that was all built in. This was 500, 480 some odd thousand for design and construction. So a portion of it's been used. We're going to go back and look at some other options preliminarily. If they look good, we'll probably proceed with that, which will require some re-engineering to what, what they've already done, but in the hopes of being able to scale the structure size down. So in a nutshell, we're looking for the extra funds because I think based on what we have to date for data, 
that the, the money that we have available will not be sufficient to complete the project as we had originally hoped. Um, and like I said, that money, that $500,000 number was more of a recommendation from, you know, over, over five, many years mm -hmm. ago before we started allocating funds to it. I think with the fact that um, cost of steel has gone up, there has been tariffs that have been implemented, and the timing of the bidding that we did, you know, all kind of raised the price up quite a bit. So there are, we are looking at every way we can to get the cost down, but that would certainly help us get in a more comfortable range where we won't be requiring our staff to do a majority of the project. They would maybe be doing more of a minimal portion of the project. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That was a thorough discussion. <laughs> yeah, on salt, I'm still on the salt shed, and we're not even going to use the salt shed this coming season. What are we looking at for a time frame? Tear down existing, start building new and utilizing what's in it. Our expectation, since we opted not to move forward with it this year, is we'd use the salt shed again one more winter with the expectation that in the spring we would start construction and have this built spring into early summer. Okay. So it would be available. For the following winter. Yeah. Very good. Any other questions? Oh. Any questions down here? Councilor Spinella? Have we completely given up looking for another location? Yeah, we've talked internally about other options. Um, I know Sally feels very strongly that it, and it, and it, she feels it makes the most sense to have this salt shed at the facility where the equipment is and where staff is, particularly because when it's getting the heaviest use is during winter storms. Um, we had talked about some other possible locations in the area, but being Old Weathersfield and kind of the community surrounding the area, we didn't feel that they were going to be very viable options. Um, so we really felt this was the best case scenario. It is typical to have an on-site with your physical services. We, we are just in the unusual case of being in the floodplain, um, and that does affect, you know, what we have for soil conditions down there, which, you know, as I said, turned out to be um, not as suitable as we were hoping when we started the project. And this is not something... Probably, I mean, you're an engineer, right? We're supposed to make the policy decisions. We have people come in front of us to start the meeting about how great the meadows are, and there's a reason that the soil down there is not adequate for something like this. It's because it's the meadows. That's why. Um, I've been concerned since day one of putting this thing down there, and I still don't understand why it needs to be put down there. I see what their point is or why they want it near the trucks. But the downside is potentially catastrophic. I mean, this thing leaks into the meadows and then what? Then it leaks into the river. Uh, I, I just think there's, there's, there's a lot of negative things that could come as a result of putting it down there because they want it closer to their trucks. I understand it may be a little more expensive for them to, to go and take their trucks to a salt shed somewhere else, but I have some serious concerns about this, and I have since day one. Councilor Hurley. Um, I'd like to make an amendment to remove the town manager's conference room of $10,000, to remove under list number two, transfer to CIP, undesignated reserves of $100,000, and to remove under list number two the salt shed of $100,000 and add a line of $210,000 to the road fund. I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second to amend the first motion. Is there any discussion on the amendment or the amended motion? Okay, seeing no discussion, let's take a vote on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 And abstain? Anyone abstaining? The motion fails. Is there more discussion on the main motion? Councilor Hurley? Yeah, I kind of feel that these items are not good right now, and I think it's a shame that you know, we talk about roads all the time, and we could do a major road with the 210000 but I understand you voted no, so there's nothing I can do about it. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. 
Councillor Rell? I concur with Councillor Hurley. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your concurrence. Um, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of the initial motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, the next item on the agenda is to cancel the September 4th Town Council Workshop meeting and set the September 4th uh, as a special Town Council meeting. Do we have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to change the Town Council Workshop meeting on September 4th, 2018 to a special Town Council meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, Kathy? Sure. Um, as part of the public hearing necessary for the Keisha Farms, the, um, we work with a bond attorney that gives us a timeline as to what we need to do in order to make the ballot for the November election. So one of the key things to allow the citizens to vote on this in November is the public hearing has to be done before September 6th which doesn't give us a lot of time based on council's schedule. Originally, September 4th was a workshop meeting night, and um, looking at that, the council has the opportunity to just change that into a special meeting night where you could have, in essence, uh, a regular council meeting where you have the public hearing on the Keisha Farm. You can also have public comments after that and an agenda with a special meeting you have to identify all your agenda items ahead of time so any other agenda items you have you can put on the agenda as part of a special meeting and one of those agenda items would be a the public hearing on the Keisha farm and then two after the public hearing uh, the council can vote then on the Keisha Farm uh, bond ordinance and whether or not to send it to the uh, ballot on uh, at the November elections. And you can put other agenda items on that uh, if you wanted to, even though it's a special meeting, because you can identify those ahead of time. And Kathy, <clears throat> to Tom's question earlier, Kathy and I did discuss it uh, previously and feel that the special meeting agenda will look like an agenda that we have here tonight. So that there will be, um, you know, we'll, we'll start with the hearing, we'll have public comment, we'll have council comment, we'll have some agenda items um, that, uh, that come up between now and um, Thursday, August 30th, when, we, when Kathy would put out the agenda. So we aren't trying to get rid of public comment, we're trying to, um, organize that meeting so that we can vote on the or the, the um, referendum ordinance and get it on the ballot. So I did want to clarify that. Um, are there any comments or questions on canceling the meeting? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, item F, Keisha Farm. Do I have a motion? Move to hold a public hearing at its special meeting on Tuesday, September 4th, 2018, on the ordinance entitled Ordinance Appropriating $2,470,000 for costs with respect to the acquisition of the Keisha Farm property on Highland Street for recreational, open space, and other municipal purposes, and authorizing the issue of bonds and notes in the same amount to finance such appropriations request the town clerk to publish and post such notice of such public hearing. Thank second. you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on this? Councilor Hurley? Um, it's my understanding that this is not necessarily what's going to be on the ballot. The, the uh, ordinance appropriating 2.47 that she just read, that it could be different language. Oh, we will we really set haven't, the question. Is yeah, we really haven't saying? talked about it yet. This is the ordinance that we have to pass in order to get to the next step. The question. So this. Mm -hmm. So the question will be different than this. 
That's my understanding, Kathy. Can you confirm that? Or hey. Dolores? The question has to be shell, and, and, and it will be, um, it is different than what the ordinance says, but it, it is the same. So we can change it, is what you're saying. Pardon me? You're saying it's different, but it's the same. Can we change it, or do we have to talk about it right now and change it at this meeting? No, you don't have to change it at this meeting. So, I... It says the ordinance for introduction tells you that when the, uh, well, the next, when we get to the question, it will be a shell question, shall the town of Wethersfield uh, appropriate 2.47? Uh, about $470,000 for costs with respect to the acquisition of the Keisha Farm property on Highland Street for recreational open space and other municipal purposes. So we can't change that at all? It's exactly how you just said it? It's going to be pretty much that, the way I said it. Well, I think the council needs to have a discussion, though, and I think we can still change it, right? Right. That's all I'm asking. Can we change this? after we vote tonight oh, yeah. i believe yes. tonight okay, that's all i asking. believe tonight is just setting the public hearing for september 4th right. so on the september 4th meeting we'll have a council we'll have a public hearing council discussion and then we will um move the ordinance okay and part of that this is the language that comes from our bond council so if we're thinking about uh, some suggestions for other language. I would just want to make sure we um, get the advice of the bond council in that regard. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstaining? Any um, opposition? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Item G: Executive Search Firm Selection. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to hire Strategic Government Resources, SGR, to conduct a recruitment for town manager at a cost not to exceed $28,000. I have a second. Second. Okay. Councillor Lesser? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So on Thursday, Councillor Hurley, Mayor Bellow, and myself interviewed uh, three finalists uh, for the executive search for the new town manager. And whereas all three were good, uh, we clearly thought that one was better. And let me give you a couple of reasons why. First off, this firm has 19 years of experience in hiring uh, municipal officials. The lead recruiter, a guy named Doug Thomas, has been with the firm three years, but the previous 27 years was a city manager. Uh, fifth, uh, 12 years in Florida and 15 years before that in Michigan. He did extensive research on Wethersfield. He came in already knowing a lot about our town. Uh, and we clearly felt that he had a leg up on the other two. The other thing that I think we really liked, uh, you know, and Councilor Hurley and Mayor Bell can speak uh, to this and other things they liked, but was their use of social media in today's world, how important that is both in marketing the town of Wethersfield and getting the word out to clients. So that was another big thing that I felt was important. And lastly, I'll say that Councilor Hurley, the mayor, and myself, we all agreed that this was the best candidate. There wasn't a lot of discussion that the other two may be better or that it was close. Even though they were all qualified and, 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 and were good, this one was clearly better. So I can confidently recommend SRG. Thank you. Thank you. I think you want me to go? Go ahead. Okay. I think Ken kind of said everything that we all kind of had written down. He displayed the knowledge and the skills that are going to be needed to um, select our next town manager. He was a town manager, like Ken said. He was more enthusiastic about coming to our town. He looked up our town beforehand. He gave. He even gave a few suggestions in the meeting before he even had the job. Um, and I think he's best suited for the job that him along with his, uh, his company. I don't know, I, he's gonna be our main person. So I, we kind of selected him. The company has a good background, so um, if one all the other companies were good, maybe if they put somebody different forward, it could have changed the outcome. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? 
Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to bids. We have three paving program bids. The first is um, road milling. Do I have a motion? Motion to increase the purchase order for Tilcon Connecticut Inc. by $40,000 for road milling services based upon the state contract number 16PSX0206. Second. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Thank you for being here tonight, Derek. Of course. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. I'm here tonight for uh, approval to increase Tilcon's PO, $40,000. Uh, as you may, may remember, I came in the spring for approval to uh, increase the PO for Tilcon at the time for our spring and summer programs. We are still working under the same state contract that we typically use for this type of work. Uh, Tilcon for the town of Wethersfield was the low bidder, and uh, we've had good experience with them, so we recommend uh, an increase in their PO to do the work listed uh, for this fall on, on the roads that are in your agenda item. Are there any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. The next is for road paving. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to increase the purchase order for Tilcon Connecticut Inc. Paving services by three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, based upon the state paving contract one seven PSX zero two three eight. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, uh, similar to the maybe, uh, milling contract, we also use state contract for paving. Um, this is uh, the same contract we used for Tilcon to do the paving in the spring and the summer programs. Um, as I said, we've had very good experience with them. It's worked well having the same company doing the milling and the paving operation. It just seems to be more seamless, easier for scheduling, and less time required of staff. Um, so I'm recommending an increase in their PO to complete the fall program. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions? Councilor Rell? Just one comment that uh, 485, no, 585,000 would be a better number than 375,000. That would be the additional 210, but I don't think that's going to pass tonight. So I think $375,000 will do. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Um, the final fall paving program, the restoration site preparation and drainage. Do I have a motion? Move to increase the existing purchase order number 20176881 for general paving in the amount of $260,000 for the town's fall paving program under the current miscellaneous paving preparation slash rehabilitation contract. We have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Okay, uh, <coughs> as, as you may know, general paving is our on-call contractor. Um, they work very closely with our milling and paving contractors during the paving programs, removing curb, replacing curb, uh, putting in driveway aprons, doing some minor drainage improvements that are related to the programs that we're doing. Um, their contract is up at the end of this year, so this is a request to increase their existing PO um, one more time to get through the fall program. Um, similarly, MDC is, gonna, is doing some utility projects in town along Garden Street. They're going to be paving the road, but we have our contractor doing some of these improvements for what the town would like to see done as part of uh, the work that was not part of MDC's uh, requirement to do, such as catch basin tops, things of that nature, um, some limited um, drainage improvements. Um, so combined with that, with one other project, we have a project to, to have them do some uh, specific repairs at some intersections in town where we are not going to be getting there to pave anytime soon, but they are in very poor condition. We have a lot of problems with the paving, a lot of complaints. So they'll be, uh, as part of this money, doing the fall program, um, doing some work ahead of MDC's paving, and also doing some intersection repair uh, at different locations for us uh, to help us seal those up before we get to winter. Uh, so this is a request is just to increase their existing PO um, to get through the fall and the remainder of their contract term. Okay, thank you. Councilor Rell. Uh, thank you, Derek. I like hearing that uh, we the town is going to work in conjunction with what the MDC is doing on Garden Street. So many times we hear that the state or the town will come in, repave a road, and then all of a sudden C&G, MDC, every utility known to man comes in, cuts it up, lays down, you know, poor 
blacktop or you know just simply cold patch it and um, you're back to the same problem you were before um, so the town is not repaving Garden <laughs> Street MDC will be doing that and then the town is doing the other Chesterfield Main Street Center and you know some of the town or some of the town roads within that area yeah when we when we looked at the program a couple of years back we were expecting with MDC having doing been doing this work this year that we were going to come in, in the fall um, some of these roads like Kenwood Fernwood Hubbard were on our paving list they were aware of it they wanted to do the mains ahead of time so some of those roads they're working in we're doing um, but the roads that were specifically uh, for their project that we were not going to be doing, such as Garden, which is going to run from Maine all the way north to Knott Street, Dorchester, Lincoln, some of the side roads off of there, they will be uh, paving when they're That's done great. with their utility project. Being a resident of that area, uh, <laughs> is it going to tie up? I mean, are they going to do the roads piece by piece, or is it going to try and be done all in one? Because I know looking at Main Street as you come down Wells, Chesterfield, all those, any major thoroughfare, you're going to be hitting, you know, um, repaving. We're working with them right now on schedule. Okay. Um, they are planning to do the lower section of Garden Street, which is Maine to Church, um, next month. Uh, we are trying to schedule our work around the same time frame. Some of the work, like the reclamation work, we want to do before they pave. So we're going to, we're, we're trying to piggyback it. So yeah, all this is not being done at the same time. I think the northern section of Garden Street for them is going to be a little bit later in the season. They're going to be doing the paving. So we are trying to Great. stagger it so it's not completely bound up at once. Great. So Thanks, Chair. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions on the paving? Okay. Seeing none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next is Weathersfield High School renovation project change order. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve change order number 00034 to Ferguson Electric for credit of unused funds in the amount of $39,543.00. Sec, do I have a second? Second. Okay, well, this sounds like good news. Can't you imagine anybody opposing this. Kathy? <laughs> yeah, this is a credit to the uh, contract for the high school renovation project. As part of we're trying to finalize and close out the contract and the renovation project. And this is one of the steps we have to go through to actually have council uh, approve this credit. Sounds good. Are there any questions or comments? Would there be more credits, or is this the only credit we're getting so for, like for the entire project? To the best of my knowledge at today, this is the, the only credit that I'm aware of. They're looking to have another meeting in September to kind of finalize everything, and I'm not sure what will come out of that. $85 million project, we're getting just shy of $40,000 back <clears throat> in credit. Okay. Would like to see a little bit more. But, um, I mean, if that's what we're getting, you're right, Mayor. I wouldn't want to say no to money coming in. But uh, I would like to have seen that number a little bit higher than 39.5. Just saying. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right, the next one we have is approval of purchase of police cars. Um, go ahead. I move we table this. Second. Okay. okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, I think if we table, we're not supposed to discuss further. Is that right, Dolores? Or can we discuss it if it's been tabled? If we table a motion, is it open for discussion? No. No. <laughs> Thank you for that confirmation. Okay, so we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Motion to table passes. Um, we have two ordinances for introduction, the uh, Keisha Farm Bond Ordinance and the Ordinance Amending Chapter 153 Shade Tree Commission. Um, so those will have a public hearing at our next meeting. We move into minutes. 
Do I have a motion for the July 16th regular meeting? Motion to approve the meeting minutes from July 16th, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, are there any changes, corrections? Oh. Councilor Rell. <laughs> a busy man tonight. It is. <laughs> and, and, and I read the minutes, so not um, in quite detail as I probably should, but one did stick out on um, page, I guess it would be page 18 of the minutes, which is page 72 of our um, second paragraph. Councilor Rell asked following up on Councilor Hurley's question earlier about the community center. Did they know about the 5,000 gallon tank? Should not be a dollar sign in the five thousand. Okay. Any other changes to the minutes? Seeing none. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Are there any abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. Um, the special meeting minutes of July twenty-third. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve the special meeting minutes of July 23rd, 2018. Do I have a second? That's my job to second it. Okay, thank you. Are there any additions or changes to these minutes? Okay, um, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? And are there any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. We will return to public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio? Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Am I close enough? Can you hear me? Okay, that's good. Beautiful. I. Okay. I was reading the Weathersfield Life, and uh, I do have a comment uh, regarding an article that has to do with uh, Fallybrook Boulevard. Not too long ago, I guess, uh, the posted speed limit on that road, it's 25 miles per hour. A dog was hit and killed. I guess, you know, if you're not a pet owner, I mean, you know, an animal gets killed hit, killed, it's, it's not much. If you are a pet owner, I think you, you realize more what it means. Dog has, has died. The posted speed is 25. People go 35, 40 miles per hour. Uh, when I read the article, I read it a couple times. And it seems that they compared Folly Brook with uh, Morrison Avenue, two other streets, Park Avenue and whatnot. And all of them have the same problems. Everybody's speeding. The police department says that basically it's accepted that people go 10 miles per hour more, and it's okay. 10 miles per hour more on a 25 mile zone, it's 40% of the speed. If there, is, if there is a speed sign that says 25 miles per hour, there is a reason for that 25 miles per hour. If you accept it 10 miles per hour or more, what does it mean? I think this, this is completely crazy. Why don't they do their job if you break the law? <laughs> Get a ticket. I would like to probably to to be notified, or not notified, but be known from other people that when you go to Wethersfield, you have to drive slow. And on Folly Brook, they were complaining because the cars, most of the cars come from Hartford, so they are used to break the law. But I think it's ridiculous because I think they should do the job. They, they, uh, they commented regarding, like, you know, put some speed bumps, some of this, some of that. Now, I would say give the tickets. And, uh, of course, like, you know, Morrison Avenue came up. And I don't know if they were talking about Morrison Avenue or not, but the only thing Morrison Avenue needs to meet standards, which it doesn't meet it today, the only thing Morrison Avenue needs is a stop sign at the intersection of Tifton and Morrison Avenue. Because if something happens there, I'm going to blame you guys. And let's not react Let's be proactive. The reason this article is there, 
It's not because, I don't know, people were complaining, people were going, you know, going too fast. No, it's because a little dog lost a life. So we are reacting instead of proactive. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak, Tom? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> I uh, attended a planning and zoning meeting on the 7th where an 8-24 hearing took place. I didn't know what 8-24 hearing was, but evidently state statute requires that uh, their planning and zoning commission needs to approve a land purchase by a municipality. Um, <clears throat> I was kind of uh, surprised that the lack of definition in this, what I think is a pretty significant expenditure, two and a half million dollars roughly. And it seems that although the negotiations were um, in executive session, so nobody outside of town council knew what was going on, um, there's not a lot of information out there to the public about what this all entails and, and, and w what's the plan. And then in this uh, planning and zoning meeting, uh, several questions were raised by commissioners about what, what exactly was going to be done with the land. Well, evidently we don't have enough ball fields. And uh, Kathy, with her experience with Park and Rec, was able to elaborate on uh, the the demand or the need for more uh, fields. Um, the, the parcels in question have uh, some topography issues, some wetlands issues, some swamp issues. Uh, so when you look at 33 acres, you're not, you're not getting 33 acres of usable land. Um, one commissioner asked if there was any kind of uh, you know, sketch or idea or plan of, you know, how many fields or where they would go or what we were going to do with the land. And <clears throat> evidently that hasn't been decided yet. It's still up in the air. It's just that we're going to go out and we're going to spend two and a half million dollars on some land. We're going to use it for recreational activities, open space, or municipal use, which is a broad spectrum of what we're going to do with it. Um, and I think the public should be m more informed about the specifics of it. Now, tonight we've already set a meeting for a public hearing. And my question is, are, are we going to have some presentation before, as part of the public hearing uh, where we can learn what exactly is proposed and how much money it's going to cost us? And if it's a two and a half million dollar project, what's that effect going to be to the taxpayers once you figure in all the interest on uh, the bond money over 20 years, I uh, assume? Uh, and further to that, what are you going to do with the land if you're going to put fields, uh, recreation uh, fields in there? How much money is that going to cost? And is that going to be part of the referendum question? Or are we just going to say, do you want, like what was in the text tonight, do you want to spend two and a half million dollars on uh, land to be determined at a future date what we're going to do with the land? So I'm not necessarily opposed to buying land for a specific use, but I am opposed to spending two and a half million dollars for something we don't even know what's going to happen with the land. Uh, a prior land purchase, we knew up front that it was going to be for passive use forever. That was it. We were getting a piece of land that you could go walk your dog on or take a hike through the fields or whatever. Nothing was ever going to be built there. You couldn't use it for a recreation field, athletic field, so on. In this case, we don't really know. Maybe after we buy it and we do all our survey work and design work, we find out 
well, we can only put one soccer field and some parking spaces. Well, gee, don't you think the people should have been told that before they voted to spend two and a half million for the land? I don't know how much for the financing and another million dollars to improve the property. So, again, I think uh, very little information out to the public. <coughs> I, I hope that's not intentional, but here we have this big focus on we got to get this done, we got to get it to, to the November uh, ballot for the referendum question, and I say slow down, do your do, due diligence, figure out what you want to do, present it to the public so that everybody understands exactly what the intent is, and then vote on it. And if it happens to be that it doesn't make the November election, so be it. So you have a referendum question in January. And yeah, it's going to cost more money to do that. But it's, it's not uh, outrageous. And uh, I, I just think it's a huge purchase. And you're really doing yourself a disservice because what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of misinformation spread around by people that are opposed to it. And I got to say, unless I heard some, some facts, some solid plan of what was going to be done, then I guess I would be on the, the uh, team that would oppose the purchase based on not knowing what we're buying. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? Good evening. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. <clears throat> now, where is the speaker for this? Where is the speaker for this? Is it comes out of here? Does it come out of the ceiling? Because it's pretty poor back there. Now, Tom was just up here to the podium, and I could hear every word he said. Mr. O'Neill and your uh, Mr. Gregor, I don't know what they said. I had a real tough time trying to understand what they said. Because I really, I'm very interested in what Mr. O'Neill said about the budget deficit. But I'm not even going to say a word about it tonight because I'm going to have to listen to it on television or on my computer. And I, here I am, sitting right here, and I can't even hear it. So, where, where's the speaker? I mean, does it come from the ceiling down? Is there a wire that goes through that sends out the, 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 the words? Or is it just, I don't know where. Anyway. I did want to make that clear that I couldn't understand what Mr. O'Neill said, nor did, could I understand what the engineer had said. But anyway, let's get on to um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this other issue. Online, you, you, you post the minutes. And in the minutes, you put uh, some kind of a meeting notes. You're all familiar with this, the meeting notes. And I'm reading and reading, I'm looking at the notes, and it tells me whether every ordinance or whatever it was that came up for discussion, how it was voted on, it passed, or whatever. But when we look at the motion number 10, and it talks about the, to approve the ordinance amending chapter A-180, Town Council Rules and Procedures, seconded by Mr. Lesser, um, it says vote. All counselors present, including the chairperson, voted A. The motion passed 9 to 0, 0. But that's not true. It was amended. It changed. And this silly thing doesn't even mention, hey, guy, whoever's reading it, it changed. It passed, but it wasn't passed per what's in the agenda. Would you agree with me on that? What you had in the agenda changed. Yet this thing says it passed. But we all know it didn't pass. There, was a, there were 
amendments made, mm -hmm. and they passed. This says to approve the ordinance amending <coughs> cha chapter A-180, Town Council rules and, rules and Procedures. No. No. It gives the reader the impression that the original agenda question passed, and that's not true. So I think you should look at that. The Keisha Farm. I look at that as... Um, the run-up. The run-up to the Keisha farm was only two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and here we are. It's just like the last town council meeting on July 19th. You came in with some ordinances. Right away you came in, listened to the public, and voted. By the end of the day, by the end of the evening, it was all decided. There's a run-up that used to happen. I mentioned in 2004. There was discussion earlier, before the vote, before the meeting, meetings before, when it was mentioned that this was going to happen, and it didn't happen. And I mean, it did happen at the meeting or two after they had it introduced. You should be introducing this stuff to give the public time. You're not doing that. With the, with the uh, Keisha farm, you're not giving a notice. This, this, there should be a run-up before you get to the public hearing. There is, I think Tom spoke about there should be information out there to everybody so they can make up their mind what they're going to do. And what do I do? When I don't have the information, I don't vote. I vote the other way. No. I don't vote for it. Just, I don't care. I'm not going into a deal that I don't know everything I need to know about. And that's where you're headed right now with the Keisha farm. You're heading down the road to where people aren't going to have the information and they're going to be forced <laughs> to either say, well, I don't know all the answers, but I'm going to have to make a decision. Okay, Mr. Young, and a lot of people up, so like myself up, will just please. make a decision of no. Push it out. Let's keep talking about it because the time is way too short. The run-up to this is very quick and it should not be happening. This is an extreme lot of money. Extreme you. what you're going to even do with the property, which you, it's, it's like pie in the sky stuff. You don't even know. You don't even have the money. And when we finally vote, and if it should pass, what will happen? And I think Tom mentioned, there'll be turf put on the fields. There'll be this put on the fields. There'll be sheds built. There'll be all kinds of things happening that the public will have no knowledge up front when they went to vote okay, and that's you how comments. you run your business yes ma'am that's how you run your business and you tell me you, you you're all for transparency you're a joke lady thank you is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight come on up George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Uh, I raised a couple questions on the farm earlier. And I, the message that I'm hearing, and I hope you're hearing it, is caution. Caution. And that, I think, is warranted counsel as a vis a vis rushing through and doing something impetuously, okay? Caution. Uh, another question, I just got a couple of brief comments that came up. I think it was one of our founding fathers say, tiny leaks in ships make them sink, or something along that line. I, I, I think that's the thrust of the comment. I may have the author wrong. And there was a little discussion tonight on $10,000 worth of chairs. I think it was chairs, right? We'll be talking about $10,000 in the conference room for, having to do with chairs. Furniture for the conference room. Furniture, room, yes. All right, there was a big incident in Washington recently. Some big mucky muck wanted to spend a bazillion dollars on furniture in his office or something caused a big flack. And, and I'm sitting there saying, what can be wrong with chairs? What, are they broken? Are they, they're falling apart? 
or I, I fail to understand or grasp how you can spend $10,000 on furniture that's perfectly fu it's functional. And you look in this room here, and somebody pointed out to me, he said, hey, why don't you take the chairs out of here and bring them in there when they're not being used and save $10,000? It's, I think, in government. It's a buck here, a buck there that gets lost. And I think when someone, when our officials get up and just say, well, the truck has reached its extended life, it doesn't work anymore. My car has reached it, gone past its extended life, it works great. And I'm planning to keep it because I like the taxes that are associated therewith, okay? So I, I think when you talk about, well, it's worn out and, you know, it's something wrong, you've got to be very, very specific. Otherwise, to this taxpayer, and I, I pay my taxes. I'm not too worried about that. That's fine. Uh, I got one other quick question, and, 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 and Derek talked about the salt shed. And I think he said the steel roof was going to cost a lot more or something. I, am I correct in that? It's a more or less. You can yeah, shake it, your head. You don't need to say yes it's a or no. It's some kind of can it's yeah, a it can came, it came that something. Mm -hmm. There was some cost increase. I thought he also said it, had to, it came from Canada. And I thought I heard him use the word tariffs. I thought I heard that, I'm, but I'm not certain. You know, this old man's hearing sometimes not so good, but I pay attention. Tariffs. Now, from whence cometh that? I want all of you to think about from whence cometh that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Do I have a motion to go into executive? Me. I oh, just sorry. have. Um, we have two. I have two communiques from uh, Bob Gaynor of 20 Orchard Hill Road. Both of them, uh, he uh, he already sent them all to counselor, all, all the councils. So uh, it is both is both are against um, information on the Keisha Farm purchase. One, okay. One. His second one is for. Uh, 96 lots for houses, a third of an acre, and selling them at $400,000 each. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Now, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion to go into executive session. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Or did you watch him do it? No. Oh, I thought it was paper. I didn't know that was in <laughs>